Hey y'all, it's Anna McHugh uh, out and about in the woods looking at mushrooms. And uh, I've come across a fairly nice collection of a fairly unusual oyster mushroom. Uh, so this is Pleurotus levis. Uh, there's a very similar species called Pleurotus dryenus. I'm going to tell you why I think this is specifically Pleurotus levis. Uh, but the two of them are uh, in the oyster mushroom genus Pleurotus, which I've probably said four or five times already. Uh, most oyster mushrooms are, um, you know, without a stem or with a very rudimentary stem. So typically you'll see them growing in shelves off of uh, decomposing wood. And you'll also find them in the store. Very frequently, all you have is just sort of a, uh, you know, nice little flowering uh, pile of mushrooms with very rudimentary off-center stems. So in the case of Pleurotus levis, you have something very, very different. They are a, a wood decomposer. So, you know, their lifestyle is the same as other oyster mushrooms. They uh, grow on hardwood. In this case, they are growing on a downed oak tree. I'm also in a little beech grove, which is uh, a tree associate that is uh, mentioned in the literature about uh, Pleurotus levis and its relative Pleurotus dryenus. So uh, you have a mushroom that has a stem growing on wood. You can see oftentimes you'll get like these really uh, elaborate and uh, dramatic fruitings of it. Um, it is a whitish, uh, you know, sort of cream colored mushroom. And you have gills that are, uh, you know, fairly deep and blade like. They're very pleasant to touch, uh, very smooth and, uh, you know, whitish uh, spores if you get a spore print. Um, the top of the mushroom, and this is one of the reasons I'm going to call this Pleurotus levis, is the uh, top of the mushroom is a little bit on the soft side. Uh, you know, some of the books call it like velour or something fancy along those lines. But basically, it feels like, a, a, you know, a moleskin um, journal, essentially, on the top. And uh, Pleurotus dryenus oftentimes is associated both with cooler weather and also being way more hairy and woolly, which is, um, you know, something that's kind of unpleasant actually so you know i am of the uh, under the impression that uh pleurotus levis is a far more pleasant mushroom to handle than dryenus so uh another feature that you may or may not notice on collections of these mushrooms is the presence of a partial veil so you can just see the remnants of it here but actually in this case it's pretty noticeable now sometimes you won't see that feature at all or it'll be fairly unpronounced there's also a lot of um, um, you know, in the, the literature about these two uh, species of sort of, um, you know, stemmed oyster mushrooms, oftentimes dryenus is mentioned as having a more prominent uh, ring on the stem and that levis does not. Um, I don't think that actually holds up under scrutiny because in every other respect, this, uh, you know, is a absolute dead ringer for the description of Pleurotus levis. Um, and again, to review that, what we have is a uh, cap and stem mushroom that grows on wood, is a decomposer, white creamy color uh, with deep blade-like gills that don't actually descend, descend down the stem very much. That's another thing as you see these really dramatic decurrent uh, gills that run down the stems of uh, oyster mushrooms and in this case you know it's attached and there you have a little bit running down here but it's not like super dramatic then uh, you have a bit of a partial veil a body that is uh, you know kind of smooth on the top and also pretty uh, robust and stiff especially in the stem so you know I'm applying a good bit of pressure here and I can take uh, take the mushroom apart without too much difficulty but when we get to the stem I'm really into some difficulty here. So, um, as with other oyster mushrooms, you know, uh, Pleurotus levis and Pleurotus dryenus are edible, but as I'm hoping you can surmise, given the amount of effort it takes uh, to take apart the mature speci specimens, that it really is the younger mushrooms that you want to go after if you are interested in eating this mushroom. I don't think it would hurt you if you, you know, ate uh, one that was tough and stiff, it would just probably take you a long time to cook, and I don't know how good it would taste. The aroma of this mushroom is not significant. The flavor of it is not significant as far as like, you know, tasting in the field to identify it. Uh, but I think one of the things that I really like about these mushrooms is just that they're so like big and dramatic. Uh, you know, this fruiting in particular is probably the largest thing that I will see today. It's a little bit on the dry side. And I also, um, you know, they're kind of gross, but in a like aesthetically pleasing way. So, you know, as soon as they get mature, they get really wide and spread out. You may not be able to see, but they're just covered in little beetles and bugs. 
And so it's very clear that they're kind of like bug high rises doing their thing. And also, you know, because they're noticeable, I get to enjoy them, uh, if only at a distance. But anyway, if you do find them and you're interested in uh, eating oyster mushrooms, this is uh, one to give a try to, uh, if that is your bag.